A 1.50 microfarad capacitor is charged to 57 volts. The charging battery is then disconnected and a 12.0 millihenry coil is connected in series with the capacitor so that LC oscillations occur. What is the frequency of oscillations in this circuit? What is the maximum current in the coil? What is the potential difference across the inductor as a function of time? And what is the maximum rate at which current changes in this circuit? Let's begin with a sketch of our LC circuit. We have an inductor, and this inductor is attached to a capacitor. The inductor has an inductance L given as 12.0 millihenries. The capacitor has a capacitance of C equal to 1.50 microfarads. We know that the capacitor is initially charged with a certain potential difference, and that potential difference is 57 Point zero volts. The first thing we need to do for this circuit is determine the frequency of oscillations in this circuit. Now you know, being a LC circuit, our circuit starts off with an initial amount of charge on the capacitor plates. This is just after the switch is closed, where we have a maximum amount of charge on our capacitor plates, which we will signify as Q0. Now that maximum amount of charge is equal to the product of the potential difference across the capacitor's plates and the capacitance of the capacitor. So we know those two values. We know the potential difference in the capacitance, so we know that maximum amount of initial charge. Now when that switch is closed and the, and the charge is allowed to flow in the circuit, the capacitor's charge, the electric potential energy, will drive a current. Now in driving a current, as the charge on the capacitor plates decreases, the current in the circuit increases. And as the current in the circuit increases, a magnetic field is induced inside the inductor. And that induced magnetic field will begin to store magnetic potential energy as the electric field in the capacitor plates will begin to lose electric potential energy. Now the current will reach a maximum until no charge is on the capacitor plates. Then the current will begin to decrease until the capacitor plates are recharged but with opposite polarization. And the increase and decrease of the capacitor charge corresponds to the change in potential energy on our capacitor plates and the change in potential energy in our inductor. Now we know that current varies periodically as a function of time and charge varies periodically as a function of time. The charge's function is equal to the amplitude of charge Q0 times the cosine of the product of the angular frequency and time. Now remember, angular frequency is defined as 1 over the square root of the product of the inductance and the capacitance. Now this is simply equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And that's what we're looking for, the frequency of oscillations. So the frequency of oscillations is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the product of the inductance and the capacitance. So this is what we're looking for for part A. So for part A, we have 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the inductance, 
which is 12.0 times 10 to the minus third Henry's times the capacitance, which is 1.50 times 10 to the minus six farads. And this is underneath a square root. When I plug this into my calculator, I get 1.2 times 10 to the third, one over root Henry farad. So those are our units. Now, uh, Henry farad, I have no idea what that is. But I do know that I am looking for a frequency. And the units of frequency is the hertz. And one hertz is equal to one over a reciprocal second. So let's do a unit check to see if our units for this expression works out. We are looking for units of one over a second because that's a frequency. And we have the units of a square root of a Henry farad. So let's look at the units of the product of the Henry farad. We know that one Henry is equal to one Tesla meter squared per amp. And we know a farad is equal to a coulomb squared over a joule. Well, a Tesla, remember, is a Newton per amp meter. And then we have a meter squared over an amp and we have a coulomb squared over a joule. Notice that a meter in the denominator cancels with a meter in the numerator. We have a newton meter in the numerator, which is a unit of the joule that cancels with the joule in the denominator. And what we have for the product of the Henry farad is, is coulomb squared over amp squared. Well, remember an amp is a coulomb per second. So this coulomb per second is squared and a coulomb squared in the numerator cancels with a coulomb squared in the denominator, leaving us with a one divided by one over a second squared. When we flip that over, we have units of the second squared. So remember, we have a one over the product of the Henry farad to the one half power. And that's just the same thing then as one over a second squared underneath a square root. And that's just equal to one over a second, which is units of the Hertz. So we have now confirmed that the units for our computation ends up being a reciprocal second or a hertz. And what that means is that we could feel pretty good about the answer we have, that the frequency of oscillations for this LC circuit is equal to 1,190 hertz to three significant figures after double checking on my calculator. We now turn our attention to finding the maximum current in our LC circuit. Now we know from work we've done previously that the maximum current is equal to the product of the angular frequency and the initial charge on our capacitor. This just comes from the fact that we know that current is defined as minus the time rate of change of charge, and we have that the charge is equal to the amplitude of charge, which is the initial charge on our capacitor plates, times the cosine of the product of the angular frequency and time. And when we evaluate this, we end up with omega q naught sine of omega t. And so you could see from here that the amplitude of our current corresponds to the maximum current in our circuit.
So this is what we're going to find, the product of the angular frequency and the, the charge, the additional charge on our capacitor. So the maximum charge being equal to omega, well remember omega, the angular frequency, is equal to 1 over the product of the inductance of the capacitance underneath the square root times the initial charge on our capacitor plates, or in other words, the amplitude of the, of the charge. And the amplitude of the charge we showed previously is equal to the product of the potential difference in which the capacitor was charged and the capacitance. This means that the maximum current in our circuit is equal to the product of the potential difference and the square root of the ratio of the capacitance to the inductance. So plugging in values, the potential difference that our capacitor was charged with was 57 volts. And this is times the square root of the capacitance, which is 1.50 times 10 to the minus 6 farads over 12 millihenries, which is 12.0 times 10 to the minus third henries. Now notice that 10 to the minus 6 in the numerator works with the 10 to the minus 3 in the denominator, leaving us with the 10 to the positive 3 in the denominator. So plugging this into my calculator, we get that the maximum current is equal to 0 0.637 times a volt square root of farad henry. So current is usually expressed as amps. This is a volt times square root of farad over henry. Let's do a check of our units to see if this is equivalent to amps. So remember, we are looking for amps, and we are comparing that to a volt times a farad over Henry underneath a square root. So this is just a volt, and a farad, remember, can be expressed as a coulomb per volt. And remember, a Henry is equal to a tesla meter squared over an amp. And this is underneath the square root. So a uh, voltage outside the square root and a voltage inside the square root simplify to be a voltage in the numerator underneath the square root. This means that an amp we are saying is equivalent to a coulomb volt amp over tesla meter squared underneath our square root. Well, remember a volt is a joule per coulomb, and we have an amp over a tesla, remember, is a newton per amp meter, and we have a meter squared in the denominator. So we have a meter in the denominator cancels with a meter in the numerator. A newton meter in the denominator cancels with a joule in the numerator. A coulomb in the numerator cancels with a coulomb in the denominator. And a amp over one over an amp is equal to an amp squared, and this is underneath the square root. So notice we have an amp squared underneath the square root, and our units end up being an amp. So it checks out. This means that we could write that the maximum current in our inductor is equal to 0 0.637 amps. Now we have to find the potential difference across the inductor. Now, if we look at our circuit, and if we look at the components of our circuit, 
we could see that the potential difference across the inductor must be equal to the potential difference across the capacitor. So let's find the potential difference across the capacitor, and that will tell us our answer for the potential difference across the inductor. Well, the potential difference across the capacitor, remember, is the charge on the capacitor's plates over the capacitance. We have an expression for the charge on the capacitor's plates. It's just the amplitude of charge cosine of the product between the angular frequency and time over the capacitance. Notice the coefficient of cosine is the ratio of the amplitude of charge over capacitance. This is just simply the initial potential difference in which our capacitor was charged. So since the, since the potential difference across the capacitor at any time is equal to the potential difference across the inductor, we could say that the potential difference across the inductor is equal to the potential difference in which the capacitor was charged times the cosine of omega t. Well, remember, the angular frequency is just 1 over the square root of the product of the inductance and the capacitance, and this is times time. So let's plug in these values. We have the potential difference across the inductor is equal to 57.0 volts cosine of 1 over the square root of the inductance, which is 12.0 millihenries times the capacitance, which is 1.50 microfarads. And this expression is multiplied to time. Now notice that in the denominator, in the denominator, we have the square root of the Henry farad. In part A, we had determined what the unit of the square root of the Henry farad is. It is the second. So what this means is when we plug this potential difference into our calculators, we get 57.0 volts for the amplitude of the potential difference across the capacitor, or across the inductor, times the cosine of 7,450 radians per second, where the seconds comes from our square root of Henry Farad, times time. And here is the expression for the potential difference between the ends of our inductor. Notice it varies periodically in time. And finally, we have to determine the maximum rate of change of current in our circuit. And that's equivalent to the derivative with respect to time of current, and we are looking for the maximum value. Well, to find that maximum value, we're going to have to differentiate our current with respect to time. And remember, current is equal to the maximum current times the sine of the product of the angular velocity and time. And from here, we are going to want to determine the maximum of that. This means that the maximum time rate of change of current, or in other words, the maximum rate at which the current will change is equal to omega, the angular frequency, times the maximum current through our inductor times the cosine of omega t. And what we see here is that this expression is a maximum when cosine is equal to 1. So when cosine is equal to 1, the maximum rate at which the current changes in our circuit is just simply equal to the product of the angular frequency and the maximum current in our circuit. 
Well, remember the maximum current in our circuit is just the product of the angular frequency and the amplitude of charge in our circuit. So this is omega squared Q naught. Well, omega squared, remember, was defined to be equal to 1 over the product of the inductance and the capacitance times our amplitude of charge. And remember, the amplitude of charge is just the product of the potential difference and the capacitance. So we have a capacitance in the numerator cancels with a capacitance in the denominator. So what we have for the maximum rate at which current changes in our circuit is the ratio of the amplitude of the potential difference across our inductor over the inductance. This is simply 57.0 volts over 12.0 millihenries. Now you can verify this, but a volt per henry is an amp per second. So when we plug in these values into our calculators, we will get that the maximum rate at which current changes in our circuit is equal to 4,750 amps per second.